on this episode of CEO Pass. So you first launched and now you've sold 100,000 units. Over, over 100,000 now, yeah. So, yeah. so when you started, did you envision that was going to happen? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> How many dessert, dessert shops all together? So 24 together. 24 yeah. together. And, and what else? The what? food service business. And the food service business. And four little girls. And four little girls. <laughs> and a married, like, like your yeah, married man. It. I had hair before we started this podcast. Now I'm joking. Yeah. So yeah, literally. And I'm a firm believer that if your dreams don't scare you, yeah. then they're not really dreams. 100%. So when I actually grew this business, I was like, yeah, you know, 100,000. Obviously, we celebrated that little win, but we wanted more. So when you first started, what did you have everything in place to make sure that 100,000 bottles is capable of selling that? No, because we're consistently growing and pushing and pushing. The struggle for growth is real as well. 24, you know, trying yeah. to kill it, trying to do something different. Whoever stayed active in this period and whoever's diversified and done different stuff. And stayed on top. Yeah, stayed mm -hmm. alive and, and, you know, they're winning. And, and, and that's hopefully what we've, we've, we've done with this and, yeah. you know, we're, we're just pushing forward. So, welcome back guys, welcome back to the CEO cast. Now, if you're new around here, my name is Raheem. This is the favorite entrepreneur podcast, and this is a place where you can bring the entrepreneur out in yourself. Now, today's episode, we've got a very special guest because we are with someone, I believe you are the first person who got the first consumable product on the podcast. Yeah. Right, so nice. it should be quite interesting. So Good. just to give you guys a couple of notes, started within the first pandemic, which was back in 2020, and has since sold 100,000 units, 100,000. Yeah, Are we taking that in? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, it's been, it's been a crazy ride, right? yeah, it's good. Baz from Jet Life. Yeah, guys. Yeah, how you doing, brother? How you doing, Reem? Thank you very much for having us here. No, no, thank it's you. It's good. Um, you know, we're just looking forward to, obviously, sharing a bit more of our story. Yeah. And just, you know, telling people more about Jet Life, the journey, um, me as an entrepreneur. Yeah. And, yeah, and, and what we're about, really. 100%. So, before we get started, I just want to give a massive, massive thank you to Mel and Chigua for making this happen, because without them, we wouldn't be able to be in this beautiful place. And I thought, since we got alcohol and vodka, there's no better place Definitely to be. Perfect, yeah. yeah. So, so yeah, Mel and Chigwell, we're here. Yeah. Um, Jot Life, if you want to try our products, it's here. It's at Mel and Chigwell. Yeah. Um, so Will please you? come down and try it. Have a good time um, when you're doing yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, well, definitely, man. You'll have, you'll have a great time, uh, you know, uh, experiencing the full range. Yeah, if but, you want yeah. to know more about Melin, make sure you click uh, up here. Yeah, up here. Click up here. You can see the podcast with the owner himself. So I think that, well, let's just get started. This yeah, let's so, go for it. Yeah, wicked. This is going to be quite interesting because I don't know anything about alcohol. Yeah. <laughs> so this is vodka, yeah? Yeah, that's vodka, yeah. And um, you sold 100,000 units. Yeah. And in, since the start of the pandemic, you had to triple your supply of... Uh, of vodka, yeah. So yeah, so uh, yeah, we recently just had a, um, a PR press release go out yeah. um, that spoke about how we're having to triple our, our supply now to obviously match the forthcoming orders coming forward. So, um, so yeah, if I just tell you a little bit about where we kind of started. Um, we started a week just before lockdown. Um, and we thought, oh my God, this is absolutely crazy. We thought, fucking hell, this is going to be a nightmare. Yeah. Um, you know, all this money invested. Um, and we thought, right, this is going to go down the pan. When I say we, um, it's a husband and wife business. So it's yeah. me and my wife uh, that run this business alongside our other businesses as well. Um, it's us that kind of create the concepts um, and take them from fruition to, to marketing to, you know, to the end goal. Mm. Um, so anyway, yeah, so we launched literally a week before the pandemic. Lockdown struck. We thought, fucking nightmare. This is crazy. But for us... God willing, it absolutely flew. Yeah. Um, online sales went through the roof. Uh, we're in most uh, independent cash and carries in, in the UK. Uh, we're now stocked in four, uh, three countries, fourth one set to open. Um, so yeah, it's been crazy. It's been, it's been so just behind this brand, I mean, you, it's been about 18 months or something like that. Yeah. And you've got celebrities alongside you, for example, the likes of Mist, and who else have you got? Yeah, so like Mist is like the kind of the face of our brand. Yeah. He brands himself as Carla Jad, so yeah. he was the kind of ideal person. He was the person that we wanted from the beginning. Um, so yeah, he's the kind of like overall face behind the brand. Yeah. Um, second to that, we've just launching in Ibiza. Um, Wayne Lineker is the face behind the brand over there. So the idea is that Jot Life Global, which is our company, every kind of country that we open in and that we launch in, mm. um, will have a different kind of face for or a stroke ambassador in that country. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we've got like new countries opening up and just follow our journey and you'll see who they are. I can't say too much yet yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, because contracts are still yet to be finalized. But Wayne and Nika and, and Miss, they're definitely part of the brand, yeah. Part oh, of the lifestyle, sick. yeah. Sick. So, yeah, so uh, going back to it, you had to triple your supply. Now, I didn't understand this in the article, so you're going to have to break this down for me yeah. and people who don't know anything about alcohol. You have five times distilled French grain, 37.5% ABV vodka. Correct. What does that even mean? Okay, <laughs> so, so yeah, so, um, okay, so just a bit of education on it. So, that's, this is our original one. 
yep. this one here. So this one is actually 40% ABV. So when you talk about AB, it's alcohol by volume. Okay. So that's the strength of the vodka. Okay. Um, so, so there will be 40% alcohol in that. Yeah, 40%. Not 40%. Yeah, 40% strength of alcohol. Okay. Yeah, so 40% of alcohol. Um, and then you have the flavors, which are 37 and a half. So you have our orange and pineapple, forest fruits. Um, and then you have our whiskey, which again is 40%. Um, there is a gin as well, but a gin is absolutely sold out at the moment. Yeah. That's crazy. Um, so yeah, the reason why we do the flavors at slightly less rather than 40%, 37 and a half, we saw that they're easier on the palate because mm. the flavors, the whole idea is to have it either just over ice or a bit of soda water and then that's yeah. it. Um, whereas the original, um, some people, most people would typically put that with a mixer. Yeah. Now, like I said, I don't drink, but from people, from the research that I've done and the people that asked, yeah. the owner of Melon himself has basically said, this is banging. Yeah, so <laughs> thank was, you yeah, very much. Right yeah, it's, it's good, get, when I go for alcohol, it's got to be the top of the range and I'm pretty sure we've got there right now. Yeah, definitely. I mean, yeah, yeah, the owners, yeah, Ali and, and Mikey, they're both uh, tried this product. Yeah. Um, yeah, they absolutely loved it. They said they get fully jatted. So what started trending for us now is jatted. Yeah. So literally, we got so many people who were like, oh my God, like last night I was jatted. And then that's kind of trending now. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so everyone's, everyone's ringing me up saying, oh, I got jatted. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, so it's, it's, it's a bit of a mad one. I think let's break down into where we started for the alcohol because yeah. like you said, or for the people who don't know, you have dessert parlours as well, yeah? So you Correct, and your yeah. missus have dessert parlours. Yeah, yeah, that's right, yeah. So you first launched and now you've sold 100,000 units roughly. Correct, yeah. Yeah, it's probably more than over, that. Over 100,000 now, yeah. So, yeah. so, it's, yeah. so yeah. when you started, did you envision that was going to happen? Yes. <laughs> without, without obviously, you know. Self-belief just, Yeah, self-belief. You know what? You know, I wanted more. Yeah. So for us, the sky's the limit. So our vision and our dreams, yeah, uh, exponential. Mm. Um, and I'm a firm believer that if your dreams don't scare you, yeah. then they're not really dreams. 100%. So when I actually grew this business, I was like, yeah. You know, 100,000, obviously we celebrated that little win, but we wanted more. So when you first started it, what, did you have everything in place to make sure that 100,000 bottles is capable of selling that? No, we had some, as every business does, every, yeah. we had teething problems along the way. There was three periods last year where we run out of stock. Oh, seriously? Um, which is an absolute fucking nightmare, to yeah. be honest. Um, any biz it was a good problem, but it was a really bad problem at the same time. Mm. Um, but it allowed me to adapt and um, allowed Sunny, my wife, uh, to, to kind of adapt around the business and make it, um, more bulletproof, I suppose. Make sure that um, not Yeah, again. exactly. Yeah, so you know, pitfalls for us. Um, you know, we made sure that we're not running out of stock again. Um, but then every year seems to have new challenges. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like this year, for example. Um, yeah, we've had the whole lockdown. The lockdown, but then things that people wouldn't realise. Yeah. Like there's a shortage of cardboard at the moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, because no one's recycling because pubs and bars are closed. Mm. Um, where normally you get it in a week, it's taking 12 weeks. So that's delayed the next flavour launch. Um, there's a shortage of glass at the moment, hence the reason why I've got no gin. So we sold 3,000 bottles in three days, right before Christmas of our gin. Yeah. Online exclusive, went absolutely crazy. Yeah. Um, but I can't, I've got liquid, so I've got no bottles to put the liquid in. Oh, damn. It's a nightmare, <laughs> and I've got a new flavor to launch in that as well. Yeah. So like things that people don't see, but these are all challenges that you have as a business as you grow. So at the moment, we're just having the challenges of the growth of a business now. Uh, because we're consistently growing and pushing and pushing, um, the struggle for growth is real as well. So, so let, me, let me just ask you there, yeah. how would you go around like, solving that issue? You've got the liquid there, but you've got no bottles. So what do you do yeah, to get so the liquid out of the door? There's nothing, we, there's nothing we can do. So like we import a lot of our glass into the UK. Yeah. Um, so we've had to just kind of increase our buying of the glass um, to make sure obviously we've got enough to put into the liquid. Okay, um, cool. But when we speak later on in the, in the podcast, I think you've got a few questions about um, the expansion and where we're going. Yeah. Um, that will answer some of the questions of how we've covered yeah. uh, the issues that we're facing at the moment. Cool. Right, so before we continue this podcast, I want to ask you all to please press the subscribe button. Make sure you like, share your friend and comment your feedback down below. But yeah, so when you first started, your initial plan was to uh, sell into clubs and bars, just like we're in the one today. Correct. And then you shifted it to online. We had no choice. Yeah. So it had to go online. Luckily for us, fortunately, we had our website open. Mm. Um, so yeah, from literally launch a product, it just, it just went crazy online. Yeah. Um, but what would typically ha happen for a brand, brands are normally born actually abroad. So what happened is you'll find them in the club on holiday and then from the club, then eventually they'd turn up into a bar or restaurant on, ab abroad. Mm. Then they'd go into duty free and yeah. from duty free into bars and clubs in, in your country and then into retail, then into obviously on the shelves and online. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've had to do it the other way around. Um, <laughs> so we've had to do it in essence the harder way around. So the future for us is really, really exciting, and really mm. promising. So yeah, so it's just more fun now, isn't it? Going around to bars and clubs. How did you make that shift from, you know, from your original plan of, you know, from clubs to bars where, you know, everyone probably would drink yeah. to then solely online? How did you, like, firstly, you, you got to be able to market that for people to go online. Yeah. And then secondly, you got to get the sales through the door. It's not really conventional that people sell alcohol online. 
Yeah, so but you know what? Different. I always say in everything that I do with, with every business is always a positive and a negative. So yeah, COVID was a really you know shit time for a lot of people. But the yeah. people that have stayed active and actually moved forward, um, they're the people that you know stay diverse. It just allows the the easier route to be a lot easier. Mm. So you know we have grown our, our social media page now from over from zero to 40, 40 odd thousand followers now in one year. Yeah. Now that's because people are sitting at home. And they're sitting there, they're on their phones, they're looking at socials, people are bored. And that allowed us to tap into that market. So we put ad spend behind there. Mm. Um, we've got your adverts, obviously, that you typically do for your Instagram, your Facebook, yeah. um, your Twitter. Um, and then we also put ads online. Um, and then just kind of word of mouth and then just stayed active. And then went out to all the local independent cash and carries, went down to retailers. Mm. Shops had a great time through the pandemic. Yeah. They were absolutely booming. <laughs> um, I know because we, we've been in that trade as well. Yeah. And so the shops were great. So that was a good time for us to knock their doors and get products into the shelves. And then obviously start turning from there. I think so. this is a great point in the podcast where we need to talk about what you've done before. Because yeah. Jack Life, like I said, we only started it last year. Yeah. Or about yeah. in March 2020. Yeah. But obviously, how old do you know? So I'm 34 now. 34 yeah, now. 34, so yeah. you've still got about 33 years of history yeah, that we yeah, haven't covered the, yeah, yet. Yeah, so we've got to go yeah. start from that. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, um, I didn't go to university. Mm. Um, I literally dropped out of A-levels. Yeah. Uh, for me, I, it wasn't for me. You know, education wasn't for me. That was that was my sister. Yeah. She's she, she's the, the education one. The intelligent one. Yeah, uh, yeah the intelligent yeah. one. Yeah. Um, so for me, I always just wanted to get active and get out there and get on the road. So for me, I, was, I went from uh, a period of working with family mm. um, and, and, and leaving that behind and then Throughout my childhood and ever since we've grown up, we had one convenience store within within our family in our household. Yeah. Um, so when I joined that business, um, I've always grown up with that. So I'd, I'd be doing it, you know, for school holidays, we're in the shop. Yeah. Uh, typical, you know, in the shop. Um, but I learned a lot throughout the way. So how old are you talking at this point? Um, from the age of nine, I was just literally oh, school, school holidays. I was <laughs> okay, in the okay. shop. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I'm, obviously I wouldn't be serving behind the till, but I'd be... You yeah. know, just, just having that atmosphere. Yeah. And I think that stuff now, looking back on it, is invaluable. Mm. So definitely for my kids and stuff, you know, I'm going to want them to grow up around entrepreneurship and that sort of thing. Yeah, 100%. Um, Make sure your kids watch CEO first. 100%. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, you're going to watch it. I'm, I'm going to let them know. Definitely, yeah. Uncle Raheem, make sure you watch his show. Standard. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, so for us, it was like, um, you know, group through that. And then I took that from one store to 10 convenience stores. So I had Costco, Premier and Nieces. Mm. Um, I had a, a, a group of 10 of those. Uh, within three years yeah um, and then from there uh, my wife she came from a very corporate background never wanted to kind of do business um, and then out of nowhere she was like right I want to open a dessert parlor um, I was shocked and then she said it again I want to open a dessert parlor so I said okay no problem let's open it we opened our first dessert, first dessert parlor so how old are you at this point now so we were at that point um, that was three years into three years into marriage so about 27 okay yeah cool. about 27 yeah, 28 yeah. I think yeah five yeah five five years ago 28 we were talking about it mm. um, yeah so um, and then literally uh, opened our first dessert parlour uh, we didn't know anything about the industry anything about hospitality created it from scratch created that first dessert parlour absolutely flew uh, we had that ROI return on investment within six months mm. um, and then we opened our second and then uh, then we had our first um, little girl um, so I've got four four girls under the yeah, age yeah, of four yeah. um, so we'll talk about that separately as well <laughs> uh, but then Sunny my wife she kind of had to obviously then you know look after the little one um, and then I kind of got more involved in the dessert parlors alongside running our convenience stores. Um, and then I subsequently, what I realized at that point was that the, what, the infrastructure that I wanted to put in place for the convenience stores, I could put into place for the hospitality. Mm. Um, because, for hus that? because like, like for example, I was making more money yeah. from five convenience stores than I was from 10. Okay. Convenience stores are a very tough trade because you're getting the likes of Tesco Express, you're getting like Express uh, Morrison's and people like that coming up on the doorstep that are attacking convenience stores. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then the margins are so great. Uh, sorry, sorry, um, and not so great. So they're very kind of tiny. Mm. The margins are. So for us, when as soon as I put an area manager in place uh, for a decent wage, that kind of killed my margin. And then suddenly you're sitting on half a million pounds worth of stock because you have to have that much stock on your shelves to be able to actually run the business for yeah, yeah. So at that point, then I realized that with, with, with food, um, everyone knows that you make a greater margin but there's obviously a lot more work that goes into staffing and infrastructure and stuff like that mm. but it allowed me to put the infrastructure in place to have an area manager to have vans on the road to have a sales team and then what I did was I was looking at other kind of models I looked at Subway I looked at um, your Starbucks your Costas I looked at the franchise model and then we decided to franchising it um, not knowing anything about franchising yeah. so we, we learned uh, as you do uh, we read we learned uh, we improvised we learned along the way um, and we started franchising and then we went from two stores to 10 stores in six months. Oh, damn. And then we went from 10 to 24 that we're at now. Would you say how much you were franchising your shop for? 
Um, what's that, sorry? How much you sh- franchise in your shop for? So we do anything from a £30,000 investment up to a £300,000 investment. Okay, cool. So it just depends. So we, we try different models. Yeah. Um, like now in the pandemic, uh, we've opened five new outlets, uh, but they're dark kitchens. Oh, is so it? So literally... So all um, Uber Eats and... Yeah, you know, Uber, Delivery, Just, just like Eat. Yeah, so, so again, that's another example of having to diversify. Yeah. Um, and we've had, you know, as, as sad as it is throughout COVID, we've had a, a busy period yeah. uh, where deliveries have done really well for us. And fortunately for us, it's allowed us to sustain and stay alive as a business. And just for the people who got confused there about dark kitchens, dark yeah. kitchens is basically, you essentially you have a unit, am I right? Correct. With a, with a kitchen in yeah. it. So it's basically, you just order for Uber Eats, you think you're getting your food from a restaurant or, you know, a dessert shop, but it's coming from there. The, the kitchen's all in, in industrial units. Yeah, correct, units, yeah, that's right, yeah. So there's actually a lot of businesses now that have come up and they've got, for example, like a big unit and they've split it into six and you'll have six kitchens from those yeah. businesses inside those units. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy, mad. the world's just changed. See, um, someone who's involved in that business must be, like, must be loving it. Yeah, Having an industrial exactly. unit, make kitchens. But they, they, they only, they only came time. along um, uh, at the start of the pandemic. Yeah. So again, that's someone's brainwave to just, as I said at the beginning, whoever stayed active in this period and whoever's diversified and done different stuff. Mm. Um, stayed on top. Yeah, they stayed mm. alive and, and you know, they're winning. And, and, and that's hopefully what we've, we've done with this and yeah. you know, we're just pushing forward. 100,000 yeah, bottles, bro. It. You definitely have done it. Yeah, man, we're trying, bro. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So, so literally from the dessert parlors then, um, we grew that then. So we got uh, three in Holland. Yeah. Uh, we're opening two more in Morocco. Um, that was meant to happen. Oh, Morocco pre-pandemic, well, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, I was over there last year, literally uh, last year, January. Yeah. Uh, before the pandemic hit, I was in Morocco. We were meant to open in July, um, but now this has been pushed back. So I'm just waiting to get back out there. But we're actually launching this over there as well now. You've you got a thing for going global, isn't it? That's <laughs> it, man. You're going you know, to have big ambitions. You know, you've got a big drive. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, you know, we're fortunate enough to be able to do that. And then from there, uh, we've just opened a food service business, which mm. opened a month before this business. Yeah. Um, so we supply 300 restaurants up and down the country yeah. uh, with, um, with waffles, crepes, cookie dough, ice cream. So we manufacture our ice cream. Uh, we've got 40 different flavors. So desserts is our kind of bread and butter. Okay. Um, but we've got a massive team behind us. Um, so Delightful Desserts as a whole um, has over 300 members of staff mm. um, 60 members of staff are ours um, so yeah we've got a good strong team behind us uh, we've got our operations director um, who, who, who's um, looking after the whole dessert side of the business he does a fantastic job yeah. um, and then that's it and me and Sonny literally focus on this and now we're just growing our team in this business and that's where we are I think let's go back to this for a second yeah, yeah? so you started in March 2020 yeah. and this was the first original bottle that you came yes. around with yeah yes so it's literally a, a clear bottle with yeah. the with the black brand. You guys can see it on camera yeah. right now. It's still a very nice bottle, especially I've just noticed as well. It feels like it's a bit embossed. Yeah, that was, that was the aim to give it a premium feel. But if you turn it around, that's a lot of people like this. They got the line on the inside. Oh, as I didn't well. even clock that. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna make sure I get some shots of that as well. But there's a there's a line on the back of the logo. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, exactly. And then you switched to what everyone would see nowadays on social media. Correct. The the black bottles. That is actually the same bottle. It's the same bottle, just spray. Yeah. It? yeah, so we spray that bottle now. Yeah. Um, this was always the vision. Mm. The vision was always to have a more premium looking bottle. And you don't really see about black bottles on the market. Yeah, no. Um, so we wanted to go for something a bit different. Yeah. And then we've also got um, UV ink. So in the clubs and bars, um, these will glow in the dark. Oh, damn. Um, so we got, um, we got one, uh, these are 70 CR. We've got one liters, 1.5s, three liters and six liter bottles coming in the same shape. Yeah. And we've got miniatures, which are like this big. So the three liter, the six liter bottles are about this big off the ground. So there for the clubs and bars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? So like, um, yeah, we just literally, and this for us. And you know, that's just a flex. When someone's going to order that big bottle, that's just a flex. A hundred percent, yeah. That's all it is, just give it 10, <laughs> isn't it? And that's what that is. But yeah. literally we had to move from there. So this bottle um, is still doing well for us. People are asking for this bottle. People yeah. are wanting to collect it. But again, there was teething problems. So when little mad things, like when these were getting packed into the boxes, yeah. the label there would get caught on the corner and okay. then you'd be in the look of the label. And yeah, then people and then obviously, you, you have no people give lots of presents or whatever, you can't control that. Ultimately, it's, uh, when when um, when the first lot came out, you couldn't put them in an ice bucket, then we had to change it to this yeah. to make sure that it doesn't peel off. Yeah, okay. Little things that people don't think of, mm. it's all crazy. Yeah, that, that, this is why we had to move to that. So when you transition from this bottle yeah. to that bottle, what did you notice any effect on the business change? Massively, yeah. It just kind of give us a more premium look, yeah. a more premium feel. Because in um, your words, when I read the article, a premium vodka or premium um, spirit deserves yeah. a premium bottle. That's it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And the premium bottle then obviously deserves premium service. Yeah. So everything that we try and do is all about ultra premium. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've just noticed on the card here, it says, enjoy life responsibly. Jat life, baby. Yeah, jat life, baby. Yeah. So that was what was trending when we thought of the idea. Yeah. So everyone's going around saying jat life, baby. And hence the reason, obviously, why where the name kind of came out and then that was it really. Yeah. Sick. 
And what about the whiskey as well? Because you come out of that recently as well. Yeah, so the whiskey and the gin. Yeah. Uh, the whiskey is actually, the gin is actually called Jipti Gin. So you, you can't see that now. Uh, but the whiskey, this was made for Indian weddings. Mm. So obviously you must have been to Indian Asian weddings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, my wedding had like 600 people there. Oh, damn. Um, so whiskey <laughs> and vodka is huge. Yeah. So we've just done a wedding this weekend. Um, I think he's had like about 350 guests. Uh, all seated, obviously, no dancing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> can't say which wedding it is. Uh, yeah, but he's basically, he ordered 150 bottles of this and 200 bottles of vodka. And they'll drink that across the whole week. It'll be finished. So the whiskey was literally, you know, for the for the Indian wedding market. Um, but it's done well. Father's Day and stuff doing really well. Yes. Yeah, so how do you manage your time? I mean, you got the, you got how many dessert, dessert shops all together? So Twenty four together. Twenty four together. Yeah. Sold one hundred thousand bottles. Yeah. How and, and the, what else? The food what? service business and the food service business. And four little girls and four little girls <laughs> and a married like, like your yeah, married man. It. Yeah, well, my wife. Yeah, exactly. And there's me thinking that I'm a busy man with yeah, you know a camera it. running around <laughs> London, whatever UK. You know, I had hair before we started this podcast. Now I'm joking. Yeah. So yeah, literally for us, it was um, when when I look at obviously our family life and stuff like that, we look at it as a as, as kind of a business, really. Hmm. You know, we always wanted our children close together. Yeah. Um, you know, I was blessed with four girls. Um, you know, uh, so at one point we had all four girls, two and under. So it was two, and then there was the the, the, the one year old. Yeah. And then obviously the two uh, the, the twins that were just born. Oh, the twins. So okay. So that yeah. was crazy. Yeah. For us, it was like there's ten months between the youngest. Yeah. Uh, the to, the, to the middle child, yeah, and yeah. then obviously then the oldest. So obviously they're growing up together, which is fantastic to see them to grow because they're like best friends. Mm. Um, but for us, it was a case of like, you know, running a household like that is teamwork. Yeah. Same as in any business is teamwork. So I, I work with my wife. Mm. Um, I'm very fortunate that you know she obviously can look after the kids. What allows me to go out and do this sort of business. But we've both got the same vision. Yeah. And I think because we've both got that same vision, it allows us to win. Um, and that's what it's all about, ultimately, to get into our end goal. Um, so, yeah, so she, you know, like, like you know, today, I had to leave early. Um, you know, three-hour drive, she's, you know, taking the kids to nursery yeah. um, and collecting them. She'll be with them. I'm in London um, every week for at least two or three nights. So I was in Ibiza for a week before this, yeah. uh, two weeks before. So it's just about teamwork and just kind of understanding and being able to do it. Um, what's, and, it what's it yeah. like, you know, uh, running a business? as you're married because that's almost like you know power couple goals yeah so 100% what's, what's like? you know what not in my wildest dreams did me and my wife ever think we'd be working together yeah. and I didn't know before this if we could have worked together because mm. a lot of couples say that you know it's difficult yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, don't get me wrong we have a few heated discussions yeah. but I think the best thing about working with my wife is that we keep it real we keep it 100 all the way you know if something's shit or something's rubbish you know I won't be afraid to say it to her she won't be afraid to say it to me yeah. because ultimately you know when you employ people or you bring people onto your books they're gonna be a bit of a yes man or a yes woman. Yeah. They're gonna be like, oh yes, yes, yeah, this is great, or oh, that's great. They just wanna really, keep their job. You know what I mean? Yeah, but really, if it's a shit idea, I need to know it's a shit idea. Yeah. Or if the website's looking shocking, then I need to know the website's looking shocking. Yeah. Um, but that's that's how we do it. We don't agree on things, you know, um, I'd say 20% of the time we don't, don't agree, because she might have a slightly different vision, but then we'll sit down, we'll compromise, and we'll discuss it. But I think the fact that we actually work together, I think is what keeps our kind of, um, you know, ourselves stable as a mm. relationship. Um, because when we are with the kids, they take up a lot of our focus. Yeah. Um, but the working together gives us us time, and you know, doing an alcohol brand is, is fun. You know. So you, you must spend a lot of time with your wife. So do you find it difficult switching off from you know business, and then you know? Yeah, I don't think we do couple. switch off. We don't switch off. To be fair, ninety nine percent of our conversations are about yeah. this. Yeah. Or about what the kids have done to piss us off. That day. <laughs> that's, 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 that's that's what it's about. Do you know what I mean? That's for real. That's that's exactly how it is. And, but you know what? We wouldn't have it any other way. Yeah. Uh, we enjoy it. Um, we enjoy creating new businesses together. In fact, it's a bit of a bad thing because when me and my wife hit the road together or we're out and about, we always come back thinking of a new business idea. Yeah. That's a bit of a, a bad thing about both of us being together all the time. Yeah. We normally hit a road trip for three hours and we're thinking, oh shit, we can start something new. We've got so many of the new businesses some that we've attached to this and some that we're going to do at a later stage. Yeah, because you've got the clothing now as well, isn't it? Yeah, the merchandise has started yeah. and that was off kind of customer demand and our passion for kind of doing it. Yeah. Um, obviously, I was speaking to you about an idea before this, yeah, um, yeah, which yeah. hopefully you know, we're going to push forward uh, with. Um, but you which know one was like, that? Because you, I'm telling you, when I'm telling you this guy, yeah, like yeah. Baz spoke to me about so many different ideas from you know the second <laughs> I saw him today to doing this podcast. So yeah. I don't even know which one you're talking about. But exactly, you, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, don't remind you afterwards. <laughs> um, but yeah, so for us, it's like um, you know just growing and innovating, and I think that's what kind of entrepreneurs do. Mm. Um, but one thing you know we're going to make sure is that we do things at the right time and when the time is right. For sure. Yeah, I think you're smashing it with that one as well. Yeah, so where do you take Jack Life from here? Because um, now, whoops, that was a close one. <laughs> but yeah, now that um, you know bars and clubs are opening up again, hopefully if there's not yeah. another lockdown 3.0. Yeah. 
you've got to now diversify back to your original plan. Yes. Or do, what do you do? Do you keep it to online sales or do you go back to the bars and clubs? Both. So mm. if the online sales and stuff are winning, we're going to allow online sales to win. Yeah. But one thing what has happened since obviously lockdown is starting to ease, online sales have decreased a little bit and that's kind of across the board and across the industry, yeah. which is what we would have expected. However, the bars and clubs side is coming Come up. Back up yeah. You know, like wedding sales, we never had any wedding sales and now yeah. suddenly we're doing that X amount of bottles that we're doing now on a week, mm. weekly basis. So that's going to hopefully go this way and it should always be that way really yeah. um, because bars and clubs is going to be the place where, you know, they'll take this product and they'll, and they'll do 10 bottles on a weekend because they mix them into cocktails or they're mixing them and people are actively drinking at that point. Yeah. Whereas a lot of our products, um, someone might buy this for Father's Day and they might sit on their shelf for six months until we have a family occasion, until people get together. So that's the, that's the flip yeah. side of online sales. You know, people might say, well, it's, you know, it's, a, it's a 30 pound bottle, it's a premium bottle. It's a, it's a, we've got to make sure it's not just a, 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 a cupboard. Correct me if I'm wrong here, yeah, but you know vodka, you pour only a tiny bit into a glass, right? Correct, yeah, with all these you don't even, and you don't even mix pour it like with whatever measure. you want. So it's like pouring like, you think of it as like a squash yeah. measure. So you're pouring that much in. Like orange, Ribena or something that's to it, mix yeah, it with. Yeah, that's it, and you mix yeah, the rest obviously okay. with water or whatever you mix it with. But these you can just join it on ice, just yeah, yeah, as a yeah. concentrated drink, yeah. And the whiskey is just literally a small little shot. Same way. It? I've seen it in Peaky Bland, it's always having. That's the yeah, just boom, this much. <laughs> that's yeah, the only time when I feel like having whiskey. <laughs> that's the, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so these are literally like spirits, so yeah, you don't put that much in. But then like we have a new range coming out, like, you know, when we're talking about ideas and stuff. Mm. Uh, we've got an RTDs coming out, so RTDs are ready to drinks. Okay. Uh, so like you know, like um, you know, like you have like Red Bull size kind of cans. Yeah. Uh, but they're already be pre pre mixed. So instead of being forty percent ABV, it'll be six percent. Yeah. But then that would already be mixed with the mixer. Okay. And you literally just crack literally the can. Just and pop drink. it away. Okay. Yeah. And that's a big business at the moment. Yeah. Uh, it's booming within the spirits. I haven't industry. seen anything like that before. There's there's quite a few. See, you don't drink, so you won't actively Probably, going out yeah. for it. Yeah. But when you are going out for it, if you do ever get a chance, just go down the alcohol and just have a look at the top shelf, just for your own peace of mind. You'll see mm. there's a massive selection of them now. That's almost um, like beers then, isn't it? That's it. Okay, makes sense. Yeah, that's it, yeah, that's it. Exactly. I want to talk about how, you, how you've how you gone global with this, because like you said, you've, you've started out, or you've opened it up in Ibiza. Yes. Yeah, and you've got plans, which I'm not going to say so on the podcast. We're already in, um, we're in Canada, Australia, New Zealand. Yep. That's already launched, that launched in lockdown. Yeah. So we're already 18 months ahead of our business plan. We're how, very fortunate. How do you go about getting in? So this is, this is what I was saying about, you know, where I keep going back to that, people that have stayed active within their business and within their, um, or thinking of new ideas like this, like you, you know, your idea, you started this at the beginning of the pandemic. Yeah. I've watched your journey grow and it's admirable watching you grow yeah, and yeah, watching yeah. other businesses succeed. Do you know what I mean? And you're doing a great job. So for us, it's all about staying active. So first lockdown came, uh, obviously we just launched the brand. Mm. Second lockdown came, we thought, okay, let's make the whiskey. Um, we managed to secure a, a contract straight from Ireland, um, which later I found out is really near impossible to do. Yeah. Um, I'll speak to some industry experts the same four years to get into Ireland and I've managed to do it in lockdown. <laughs> Um, I don't know how it just you know when the stars align they just yeah, work you know what I mean yeah. and then second lockdown came um, we we then basically thought okay well what should we do here mm. so I thought okay we either just ride it through as we're doing or we get active and start international the biggest ball ache about international was doing all the paperwork yeah so now we've opened up all the markets so we've got all our licenses we've got all our wagons we've got all our our stuff that we need to be able to do it mm. um, and now we export over to um, Canada we've already launched in Canada they had three pallets sold out in four days. Uh, we sold it to Australia and New Zealand. They had about four pallets sold out within again about a week. Um, they've just ordered a full container now. So our next problem for the export side of the business is that it takes 45 days to get product from here over to there. Yeah. That's another problem that we're having at the moment. So they just ordered a full container now. Damn. And then, but we're launching in, um, uh, we've got Dubai, Morocco, uh, Colombia, Mexico, Maldives, um, Thailand. We've got about another seven, eight other countries on top of that. Nigeria's happening. Um, so we're just yeah going global as a as an industry yeah. Like I said, I don't I don't know much about alcohol because yeah. you know I don't drink, but from what I've heard, you know, speaking to like my neighbours who 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 are drinkers and you know yeah. other people, friends, whatever, they say alcohol makes a lot of money because of the profit margins. Yeah. You being in that field, can you verify that or what's it like? Um, I can imagine for you it's probably slightly different because you don't go through the traditional it route. There's you great, got so much marketing. There's fantastic like that. margins. Yeah. Um, however, but alongside that comes huge budgets. Mm. So. For anybody thinking that you know to get into this industry, it's an expensive game. If you're going to do it properly, yeah. if you're doing it as a hobby, yeah. then but but you know how long can you kind of exist doing it as a hobby? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know we were here. We've got big plans. We've got big exit plans with this. Mm. Um, for us, it's, it's always going to be a business that we kind of created an exit. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So ask me that question in four years when we're gone. <laughs> so, and then I'll let you know if, 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 if we sold it for the figure that we need to sell it for. Okay, so you let's I mean? talk about it because on the way here, yeah, um, you said, you know what, Raheem, let's talk about exit plans yes. as well, yeah. 
So for a second, I was thinking, what? Like, is Baz selling up? And, you know, are we doing this podcast? Yeah, yeah, and next yeah, week, yeah. no, tomorrow he's going to be selling it. By the time the podcast comes out, it's going to yeah, be yeah, sold. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, it's gone. So what's your exit plan? What, like, obviously, I know what you mean. But for yeah. people who don't know what exit so, plan means. So what? basically, for it, for us, you know, when we created our dessert parlors, for example, those are going to be a business that, you know, we'll probably run for a very long period of time. That'll be our bread and butter. That's what we do. And we'll continue to grow that business yeah. until maybe we're old and then we'll sell. Yeah. Um, this business here was always clear strategy for me. So ever since me and my wife created this, it was a case of, right, in five years, we're going to sell the business. Mm. So we're already, what, 18 months down that road, another three years, we're going to sell. Yeah. Um, come in, be disruptive enough uh, to get one of the bigger businesses to either come in and buy us and then we're gone. Yeah. However, the plan's slightly changed since then. Um, so f- since then, we're actually heading towards an IPO. Um, so in the next um, 15 to 18 months, uh, we're looking to list on the stock exchange. Um, and the idea behind that is that we're getting a lot of people approaching us now saying they want to invest in Jot Life, they want to invest in the brand. And then that kind of transitioned our ideas to saying, okay, well, let's do something that hasn't ever really been done before. Um, there's not really a singular product that's on the, uh, on, on the stock exchange. Mm. So imagine now, for example, Everyone's in, everyone again over lockdown is doing crypto. Everyone's doing investing. Everyone's doing trading. I've got I built my crypto career. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Do you know what I mean? Like everyone's doing that. So we're having a lot of people thinking, okay, if we can get, for example, this product here, um, Jot Life as a whole, put that on the stock exchange. Now imagine if uh, you were a drinker and you owned that product. What are you going to drink? Jot Life. You're going to drink Jot Life. Yeah. Now imagine if you've got six million people doing that, and they're all telling their friends, and they're telling their friends' friends, and everyone's mm. investing and buying stocks. Yeah. That's what we're looking to do with this product. And that is, from what I've done and researched, hasn't been done before. You'll only ever see the bigger boys as a, as a group sitting on a stock exchange. Mm. But we want to sit on as a different, as an individual product. Um, so that's the, that's the plan, the exit, exit strategy, yeah. Before we like wrap it up, because yeah. Melon is about to open. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah before, before we wrap it up, I just want to ask, what's the competition like for, for this sort of business? So there's always the drinks industry is absolutely saturated yeah, it's yeah, huge yeah. I can it's imagine. about how do you set yourself apart I mean where you are in a bar the first thing I can think of and see is Ciroc yeah exactly Ciroc, Grey Goose yeah. uh, Belvedere those are our kind of they're, they're, they're the kind of brands that we aspire to be like you yeah. know the worldwide brands uh, they've been around for a long period of time mm. and they're very successful yeah. you know they don't even need to market anymore mm. um, and that's the thing that is the exact point they don't market anymore or if they do market they'll very market very minimally because they're so big and so so vast out there as a brand. They've built the brand up. Exactly, whereas like for us now, we're attacking that market. So our price point is smack bang in the middle of Grey Goose and Ciroc. Yeah. Um, but we're marketing. Yeah. We're marketing heavily. You know, our marketing budget for this year is, is, is north of a million pound. That's just marketing. Um, and I think without doing that, we're not going to be able to grow. But it's a new form of marketing, influencers, ad spend. You know, these sorts of things that, that bigger companies aren't doing anymore. The traditional ones, isn't because it? Because yeah. they're like, well, we've already done it. Mm. But for us, I see that as a, as a gap in the market to be able to attack it and actually, you know, actually go for it, basically. I hope you guys want a day in the life of Baz because <laughs> I want to come alongside you whenever you go to your next trip, living yeah, it up, you know, whether, whether it's Cannon Run or whether it's, I don't even know where you're going to go Let's do it. Yeah, I think we're we'll going to, uh, we're doing the drive here to Ibiza again. I think we need to do yeah, it, like, yeah, definitely good. something like it's that. It's good, at least i got a driver now, isn't it? Yeah, there we go. Standard, yeah. As long <laughs> as I can drive your yeah. car, I'm happy, bro. Yeah, that's it, let's do it, man. It's good, yeah, it's fantastic. Um, yeah. Before we wrap up, I just yeah. want to ask you one couple of, like, yeah. some advice almost, yeah? What would you advise to a young your younger self or someone in my position, 24, you know, trying yeah. to kill it, trying to do something different. What sort of advice would you give My me? advice is, see, this goes back to like, you know, I have this conversation a lot with them, um, with kind of entrepreneurs. Mm. And, and you know, you, you yourself within your own right as an entrepreneur, everybody is an entrepreneur that have got that desire to go out and create something. Um, and that is something that we're working towards at the moment. Now, you know, actively in the future, I'd love to see entrepreneurship on the national curriculum. I yeah. believe it should be. Yeah. I believe, why are they telling people to, you know, become a doctor instead of owning the whole doctor's practice yeah, 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 or become yeah. a dentist instead of whole, owning the whole dental surgery. You know, that is what people need to aspire to be. Now, if you've got that burning desire inside you, literally just just go for it. Just fucking go for it. Don't even hesitate, just go. And that's what you've done. And you know, you can see it within yourself and that's what we've done now. There's a lot that you'll learn along the way. Mm. There's no failures, there's only lessons. Yeah. So just take those lessons, keep growing um, and keep winning. And um, you know, this is what I want to go into afterwards once we've sold this is into business mentorship. Mm. So, and Sonny wants to go into my wife, she wants to go into business, women in business, that's a huge thing. Yeah. Uh, women in business, Asian woman, mother in business is huge. So she's looking to do that. Um, I'm looking to do male, you know, business mentorship. And, um, but yeah, my advice is literally just, just go for it. Don't hesitate. There are gonna be failures and stumbling blocks along the way, um, but don't take them as failures, take them as lessons. And 
eventually you'll hit you'll hit it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? The, the person that keeps trying is gonna eventually you'll hit that mm. that that jackpot. Like, do you know yeah. what I mean? Like if you're playing roulette, eventually you will hit your number. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. as long as you're hitting it hard every time, hopefully you hit the jackpot. And that's what we're trying to do with this. And 100%. that's what you're doing with yours. I mean, we were discussing before we started this. You know, you got ambitions to fly abroad. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. To you know, to interview some of the most wealthiest people in the world, mm. and hopefully one day you'll be in front of Mark Zuckerberg and people. Are, oh yeah, I mean? it will happen. I'm you know believing I mean? it. Yeah, this is standard. it. And yeah. you know, the power of the power of a manifestation. I truly believe in that. Yeah. You know, put it out there. Um, if you haven't got a vision board, get yourself a vision board. Yeah. Get it up. See it. See it every morning. Visualize your goals. You only get one chance. And um, people, uh, most people will say to you, "Don't do it. Don't bother. It ain't gonna work." Mm. You know, tell those people to fucking just do one. Yeah, fuck <laughs> off, basically, and just yeah, just go for it. Yeah, Do you know what I mean? And listen to sound advice. Surround yourself with people that are like-minded. Yeah. You know, if you sure. su- they always say that age old saying, you surround yourself with five millionaires, you'll become the sixth one. Yeah. Um, and I truly believe that. So well, yeah, just keep surrounding fact, yourself yeah. and just, yeah, man, go for it. I want to be a millionaire before I'm 30, trust me. The man 100%. I've met, yeah. And I truly yeah, believe it. Millions. That's it, man. 100%, <laughs> man. You know, just do it. Well, you know what I'd love? Yeah. Um, Sonny, if you're watching this, and I ho- hopefully you are, if you want to come on the podcast and talk about women in business, yeah. I think that'll be sick. Maybe yeah. even a part two with yourself, like a joint power. Yeah, hundred percent. Well. And the best thing to do is yeah, do her by herself. Yeah, and then um, then do a day in the life of us. Yeah, yeah. 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 You sure. can meet the girls and see how mad they are. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> right, guys. I hope you lot enjoyed that yeah. episode. Um, if you lot want a part two, do let me know. The only yeah. reason we got to finish up right now is because Melon's open up. Instead of hiring a studio, I hired a restaurant. Yeah. <laughs> but I only hired it for a certain <laughs> amount of time. That's so, yeah, good. Once again, I want to thank Melanie Chigo for making this happen. Yeah. The most beautiful restaurant in London. So make sure you come down here. Make sure you eat. You know, tell him CEO car sent you if you're going to drink. Well, we sure are looking to, um, uh, with Melanie, sorry, just on that point. Yeah, go on. Um, we are looking to do a launch party here in Melanie. Yeah. Um, it was meant to happen 4th of July, but because of lockdown, it's been pushed back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, we'll be doing a big launch party for Jack Live with Melon. Um, later on in the year I'm coming um, so I'll yeah, document that for you lot so make sure you lot come down as well CEO cars are going to be here Baz are going to be here yeah, obviously the melons are going to be here so keep an eye out on social media for when that's going to be announced yeah definitely <laughs> guys thank you very much thank yeah, you for thank having you. me other than that I'll catch you lot in the next episode of CEO cars so make sure you stay tuned for that one yeah, yeah? cool appreciate good. it Baz thank you very much man really appreciate it bro. how was it yeah, good man. Good, it's good. Yeah. yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, it's good man. How do you find it? Yeah, it's sick. Yeah, it's sick, good man. Yeah, 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 wicked man. Hopefully, we've got some good content and stuff. No, I think there's, there's definitely good content. Yeah. yeah.